This is part three in my series on Comet Elenin. Is it a hoax or is it the hand of God? And primarily I will be concentrating on an article published by Dr. Alan Hale on Leonid Elenin's own Space Ob's website. Now Dr. Hale is a very famous astronomer. He was a co-discoverer of the Hale-Bob Comet. But I was very disappointed in this article. It is more noteworthy for what he leaves out of the article than for what he puts in. I am afraid Dr. Hale is another disinfo agent. But first I want to take a look at the major news media. As you know, there is a continual blackout on Comet Elenin. Now some of you might say, well, what about CNN? They're a 24-hour cable news service. Certainly they must have something on Comet Elenin. Well, let's take a look. CNN homepage, Comet Elenin. Your search, Comet Elenin, did not match any documents. Well, okay, you might say this is just the American news media. Let's take a look at a foreign news service. For example, BBC. BBC, search results for Comet Elenin. Sorry, there were no results for your search. Well, nothing on BBC. How about Time Magazine? Certainly they must be covering a news story like Comet Elenin. Time Magazine. Search results for Comet Elenin. Time Magazine asked, did you mean Comet Lenin? Your search produced no results. Comet Lenin? <laughs> well, maybe if we rename Comet Elenin to Comet Lenin, Time Magazine may cover it. Now maybe I am searching under the wrong title. Maybe there's a story on Leonid Elenin, the discoverer of the comet. Let's take a look. Associated Press searched for Leonid Elenin. No documents found. Nothing on the Associated Press about Leonid Elenin. Well, certainly the prestigious New York Times would have something on Leonid Elenin. The New York Times. Your search, Leonid Elenin. Your search, Leonid Elenin, did not match any documents under the past 12 months. This cover-up is truly amazing. The New York Times, for example, covered the Hale-Bopp comet well over a year before its perihelion. The perihelion for Comet Elenin is less than two months away. What's even more incredible is that Dr. Hale, in his article, says that Comet Elenin has the potential to be, quote unquote, a great comet. Even the name Elenin should be interesting, because it's the opposite of 9-11. And as you know, the perihelion for this comet is on the 10th anniversary of 9-11, the terror attacks in New York City. Wouldn't that be newsworthy? Equally incredible, is that Comet Elenin was predicted more than 10 years ago by the Hollywood movie Deep Impact. Almost all the details are included in that movie. And in fact, Russian television did do a story on Leonid Elenin and they included a clip from this movie. Let's take a look. So in the West, the only news you will find out about Comet Elenin is on the internet. And I've posted Dr. Hale's article here, and we'll take a closer look at it. Dr. Hale put his article on the internet. He did not put it out as a press release. That is interesting in itself. Now, he does include more information about Elenin that I had not known before, but he leaves out some critical information also. Let's take a closer look. Dr. Hale writes, This has undoubtedly been one of the most eagerly awaited comets in recent years. Eagerly awaited? What are you talking about, Dr. Hale? This is one of the secrets of the century. Nobody has heard of Comet Elenin unless you follow the internet. Your credibility has just fallen, in my estimation, a great deal. 
Dr. Hale continues, It was discovered back on December 10th, 2010, by Landon Ellenen. Let me pause right here. As I stated previously, Dr. Hale includes a lot of interesting information in this article. But he leaves out some critical information also. Now he gave us the date that the comet was discovered. But as we go through this article, you will find he leaves out the most important date for any comet, and that is its perihelion, the date that it is closest to the Sun. Now why does he do this? Now I'm going to break right here and take a look at the JPL website to assure that the perihelion for Comet Ellenon is still 9-11. And the reason I do this is because they have changed the date that Comet Ellenon breaks the ecliptic. Let's take a look. Now this is the JPL orbit diagram for Comet Ellenon over here on the left. And I have it set for July 22nd. And up here you will see that it breaks the ecliptic. This is the orbit, the elliptical orbit for the comet. It breaks the ecliptic at this point right here. This dark blue line shows the comet below the ecliptic. And this light blue line is above the ecliptic. Now previously, this point occurred on 9-11, the exact same date as the perihelion. However, NASA has updated this particular diagram, and I will put this in motion, and I will try to stop it at approximately September 11th. I stopped it at September 6th, and we advance it one day at a time. At September 11th, you'll see that it is not quite at the breaking the ecliptic point. If I move it up ahead two days for September 13th, now it is right at the breaking point. And maybe if I zoom in on this, you can see what I'm talking about. In fact, if I move it up one more day, September 14th, so therefore I think we can conclude that according to this new NASA diagram, Comet Ellenon will break the ecliptic, that point right there, between September 13th and September 14th. Now let's take a look at the perihelion for Comet Ellenon. And I will move this back to September 12th. Over here is the date. Over here it is 0.483 astronomical units from the Sun. If we go back to September 11th, here's the date. It is 0.482 astronomical units. And if we go back one more date, September 10th, then it is 0.483 astronomical units again. Therefore, the perihelion, that is the closest distance, that Comet Ellenon is to the Sun remains on September 11th. Now let's return to Dr. Hale's article. And you will note in this passage that although he talks about Comet Ellenon's perihelion, he does not give the date. The first calculated orbits for Comet Ellenon suggested it would remain a distant object. However, it soon became clear that it was traveling on a remarkably low inclination orbit that would carry it quite close to both the Sun and the Earth. Furthermore, the geometry for forward scattering of sunlight, and I will talk about that in a minute, and thus an accompanying brightness enhancement is quite favorable about that time. All this has led to a realization that Comet Ellen possesses at least the potential to become a relatively bright object, conceivably even a great comet for a brief period of time around perihelion. And what is the date, by the way, Dr. Hale, for the perihelion and its closest approach to Earth? Now, as I understand forward scattering, and maybe if there's an astronomer in my audience, you can correct me, but I believe at perihelion, Comet Ellenon may look a lot brighter because it won't look like this in the sky. Instead, we will be looking down the tail and the sunlight will be coming through the tail and making it look brighter. The example I read on the internet was it would be like a flashlight in fog. Now let's take a look at Dr. Hale's article where he talks about an alignment between Earth, the Sun, and Comet Ellenon. After that, its motion on the sky reverses as it crosses almost directly between the Earth and the Sun passing less than two degrees north of the Sun on September 
26th. Again, I want you to note, although Dr. Hale gives the exact date for this alignment between Elenin, the Sun, and the Earth, he never gives an exact date for the perihelion, which is really the most important date in any comet's orbit. And also notice that Dr. Hale did not mention what happened on previous alignments of the comet Elenin with the Earth and the Sun. It would certainly seem to me that the earthquakes in New Zealand and Chile and Japan, all of which occurred very near alignments with comet Elenin, would be of more than passing interest to Dr. Hale. But he seems to ignore that, just as he ignores the date for comet Elenin's perihelion. Now let's look in this next passage and we see that Dr. Hale is not averse to giving many precise dates. By the end of the first week of October, Comet Elenin will emerge into the morning sky, traveling rapidly west-northwestward through Leo and passing six degrees north of Regulus on October 11. It makes its closest approach to Earth on October 16 and travels rapidly through Cancer and Gemini around this time passing just one degree north of the bright star Pollux on October 22nd, then enters Auriga shortly before the end of October, and then northern Taurus at the end of the first week of November. The comet is at opposition shortly after the middle of that month, and then passes through the northern region of the Pleiades star cluster on November 23rd. At the end of that month, it crosses into eastern Aries, where it remains up through the end of January 2012. Now I must add that Dr. Hale in his article does include some interesting observations about Comet Elnin that I was not aware of. He says, for example, that the comet could very well break up at perihelion, even though once again he does not give the date for this event. This is only a guide, of course. The comet could easily be one or two more magnitudes brighter or fainter than this. Conceivably, it could fragment as it passes through perihelion and come out distinctly brighter than it was earlier. On the other hand, it could break apart completely and disintegrate as it passes through perihelion. So thank you very much, Dr. Hale. This is very interesting information. I was not aware that it's very possible that common elenin could disintegrate into many pieces. Now, wouldn't you think the news media would be interested in this possibility? Why is there such a complete news blackout on this story? And Dr. Hale continues. Unfortunately, some elements in our society, uh-oh, do you suppose he's talking about the bad guys, have latched onto the news about Comet Elenin. Oh, wait a minute, what news are you talking about, Dr. Hale? There's been no news about Comet Elenin and have been promulgating various apocalyptic scenarios regarding it. Various apocalyptic scenarios? Now you are talking my kind of language, Dr. Hale. Are you saying that Comet Elenin is not found in the book of Revelation, the book of the apocalypse? Because now I am going to have to disagree with you. I think Comet Elenin is found in the Bible. Some of these have gone so far as to question Leonid Elenin's existence as an actual person. Well, I wonder why people might question Leonid Elenin's existence as an actual person. According to AP, UPI, CBS, NBC, ABC, CBS, MSNBC, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the LA Times, Newsweek Magazine, Time Magazine, BBC and Reuters, Leonid Elenin might just as well not exist as an actual person. And so in conclusion, Dr. Hale, can you see why people might just consider Comet Elenin to be an apocalyptic scenario? And to be honest, you only added to the mystery. You deliberately, yes, I said deliberately, left out the date for the perihelion of Comet Elenin. And that date is extremely significant. 9-11 will be the 10th anniversary of the terror attacks in New York City. You also left out any mention of all the earthquakes, which seem to be associated with alignments of Comet Elenin. In other words, Dr. Hale, I believe your article is more noteworthy for what you have left out 
than for what you have put in. And now, as a message to my subscribers, I had originally intended on this program to discuss where Comet Elenin is found in Bible prophecy, but I will have to postpone that until part four. I really thought it was important to respond to Dr. Hale's article. And in the meantime, if you want to read Revelation, check out chapter 6, verses 12 through 16, because I believe Comet Elenin is related to the next event in Bible prophecy, and that is the opening of the sixth seal. And as usual, if you would like a free copy of my book, Revelation Unraveled, you can write to the address you see on your screen or send me a private message to my YouTube account.